Chapter 17, Anchoring Yourself to Success Our world is full of anchors, some of them profound, some of them trivial. You can see people and instantly go into state, good or bad, depending on the feelings you have associated with them. You can hear a song and have an instantaneous change of state. All are the results of powerful anchors. This section of the book ends with this chapter on anchoring for a very good reason. Anchoring is a way to give an experience permanence. We can change our internal representations or our physiology in a moment and create new results, and those changes require conscious thought. However, with anchoring you can create a consistent triggering mechanism that will automatically cause you to create the state you desire in any situation without your having to think about it. When you anchor something effectively enough, it will be there whenever you want it. You've learned any number of invaluable lessons and techniques so far in this book. Anchoring is the most effective technique I know for constructively channeling our powerful unconscious reactions so they're always at our disposal. Anchoring is a way to ensure that we always have access to our greatest resources. It's a way to make sure we always have what we need. We all anchor regularly. In fact, it's impossible not to. All anchoring is a created association of thoughts, ideas, feelings, or states with a specific stimulus. Do you remember studying about Dr. Ivan Pavlov? Pavlov took hungry dogs and put meat where they could smell it and see it but not get to it. This meat became a powerful stimulus to the dog's feelings of hunger. Soon they were salivating heavily. While they were in this intense state of salivation, Pavlov consistently rang a bell with a specific tone. Pretty soon he no longer needed the meat, he could just ring the bell and the dogs would salivate as if the meat itself were in front of them. He had created a neurological link between the sound of the bell and the state of hunger or salivation. From then on, all he had to do was ring the bell, and the dogs would literally go into a salivation state. We, too, live in a stimulus-slash-response world, where much of human behavior consists of unconscious programmed responses. For example, Many people under stress immediately reach for a cigarette, alcohol, or in some cases something to snort. They don't think about it. They're just like Pavlov's dogs. In fact, many of these people would like to change their behavior. They feel their behavior is unconscious and uncontrollable. The key is to become conscious of the process so that if anchors do not support you, you can eliminate them and replace them with new stimulus-slash-response linkages that automatically put you into states you desire. So how do anchors get created? Whenever a person is in an intense state where the mind and body are strongly involved together and a specific stimulus is consistently and simultaneously provided at the peak of the state, the stimulus and the state become neurologically linked. Then, any time the stimulus is provided, the intense state automatically results. We sing the national anthem, create certain feelings in our body, and look at the flag. We say the Pledge of Allegiance and see the flag. Pretty soon, merely looking at the flag automatically triggers these feelings. Yet not all anchors are positive associations. Some anchors are unpleasant or worse. After you get a speeding ticket, you get a fleeting sinking feeling every time you pass the same corner on the highway. How do you feel when you see a red flashing light in your rear view mirror? Does it instantly and automatically change your state? One of the things that affects the power of an anchor is the intensity of the original state. Sometimes people have such an intense unpleasant experience, like fighting with their spouse or boss, that from then on, their relationship or job loses all its joy. If you have such negative anchors, this chapter will teach you how to replace them with positive anchors. You will not have to remind yourself, it will happen automatically. Many anchors are pleasant. You associate a particular Beatles song with a wonderful summer, and for the rest of your life, whenever you hear the song, you'll think of that time. Or you finish off a perfect date by sharing an apple pie with chocolate ice cream, and from that point on it's your favorite dessert. You don't think about them any more than Pavlov's dogs did. But every day you have anchoring experiences that condition you to respond in a particular way. Most of us are anchored utterly haphazardly. We're bombarded with messages from television, radio, and everyday life, some become anchors and others don't. A lot simply depends on chance. If you're in a powerful state, either good or bad, 
When you come in contact with a particular stimulus, chances are it will become anchored. Consistency of a stimulus is a powerful linkage or anchoring tool. If you hear something often enough, like advertising slogans, there's a good chance it will become anchored into your nervous system. The good news is that you can learn to control that anchoring process so you can install positive anchors and cast out negative ones. In our chapter on reframing, we noted that the same stimuli can have different meanings, depending on the frame put around them. Anchoring goes on in both positive and negative ways. So let's review more specifically how you consciously create an anchor for yourself or others. Basically, there are two simple steps. First you must put yourself, or the person you're anchoring, into the specific state you wish to anchor. Then you must consistently provide a specific, unique stimulus as the person experiences the peak of that state. For example, when someone is laughing, they're in a specific congruent state, their whole body is involved at that moment. If you squeeze their ear with a specific and unique pressure and simultaneously make a certain sound several times, you can come back later, provide the stimulus, and the person will go back to laughing again. It's crucial to be aware of anchoring because it is always going on around us. If you're aware when it's going on, you can deal with it and change it. If you're not aware of it, you'll be mystified at the states that come and go seemingly without reason. Have you ever had an experience when all of a sudden you're depressed and you don't even know why? Chances are you have. Maybe you didn't even notice the song playing low in the background, a song you'd link to someone you used to love a lot who is no longer in your life. Or maybe it was a certain look somebody gave you. Remember, anchors work without our conscious awareness. Let me give you a few techniques for handling negative anchors. One is to fire off opposing anchors at the same time. Let's take an anchored feeling of grief triggered at a funeral. If it's anchored on the upper part of your left arm, one way to deal with it is to anchor on opposite feeling, your most powerful, resourceful feelings, in the same place on your right arm. If you trigger both anchors at the same time, you'll find something remarkable happens. The brain connects the two in your nervous system. Then, any time either anchor is touched, it has a choice of two responses and the brain will almost always choose the more positive response. Either it will put you in the positive state, or you'll go into a neutral state, in which both anchors have cancelled each other out. Let me give you another powerful tool for dealing with negative anchors. First let's create a positive and powerful resource anchor. It's always best to start with the positive rather than the negative, so if the negative becomes difficult to deal with, you have a tool to help yourself get out of that state quickly and easily. Put yourself in that powerful, resourceful state and pick the color that's most resourceful for you. Do the same thing with a shape and a sound and a feeling that you would associate with your most powerful, resourceful state. Then think of a phrase you would say when you were feeling happier, more centered, and stronger than you've ever felt before. Next, think of an unpleasant experience, a person who's a negative anchor, something you're afraid of. In your mind, put that positive shape around the negative experience. Do it with the utter belief that you can capture the negative feeling within it. Then take your resourceful color and physically blow it all over the negative anchor, with such force that the anchor just dissolves. Hear the sound and feel the feeling that occurs when you're totally resourceful. Finally say the thing you would say in your most powerful state. As the negative anchor dissolves into a mist of your favorite color, say the thing that accentuates your power. How do you feel about the negative situation now? Chances are you'll find it hard to imagine that it bothered you so much before. Do this with three other experiences, and then do it with someone else. If you've just been reading along, these will come across as odd, even silly exercises. But if you do them, you'll be able to see the incredible power they have. This is the key ingredient of success the ability to eliminate from your own environment triggers that tend to put you in negative or unresourceful states, while installing positive ones in yourself and in others. Think of the good you can do as you learn how to anchor those positive states effectively, not just in yourself but in others. Suppose you talk to your associates, got them in a motivated, upbeat frame of mind, and anchored it with a touch or expression or tone of voice that you could produce in the future? After a while, by anchoring those positive mental states several times, you could elicit the kind of intense motivation at any time. 
their work would be more rewarding, the company would be more profitable, and everyone would be much happier. Think of the power you could have in your own life if you could take the things that used to bother you and have them make you feel great or resourceful enough to change them. You have the power to do it. Let me leave you with a final thought, not just on anchoring, but on all the techniques you've learned thus far. There's an incredible synergy, a processional sense, that comes from mastering any of these skills. Just as a rock thrown in a quiet pond sets off a pattern of ripples, success with any of these skills breeds more and more success. You should already have a strong and clear sense of how powerful these skills are. My hope is that you will use them, not just today, but on an ongoing basis in your life. You will increase your own personal power with each skill you learn, master, and use. There is a filter to human experience that affects how we feel about everything we do or do not do in our lives. These filters affect anchoring and everything else we've discussed in this book. I'm talking about Chapter 18, Value Hierarchies, The Ultimate Judgment of Success.